When commodity index funds roll their futures contracts, they can create profit or loss depending on the structure of the futures curve of the commodity being traded. Let's look at the two types of curves and then see some real world examples. Futures curves can be either normal or inverted depending on the price of the future relative to today's spot price. As you see in the example, a normal futures curve reflects futures prices greater than today's spot price. Inverted curves, on the other hand, have futures contract prices that are lower than today's spot price. Corn is a good example of a normal futures curve. The spot price of corn today is about $5.81 per bushel. This price increases as the maturity date of the futures contract increases. The longest future, which expires in July of 2009, is priced at over $6.40 per bushel. Oil futures are a good example of an inverted futures curve. The current spot price of oil is about $123. For short maturity dates, the futures curve appears to be normal. However, as the maturity dates get longer and longer, the curve becomes inverted. The price per barrel for oil to be delivered in September of 2011 is slightly more than $121 per barrel. That's less than today's current spot price of $123 per barrel. Now that we know the difference between normal and inverted futures curves, we need to talk about why they arise and what effects they have on commodity futures contract rules. As time passes, the price of a futures contract must converge to the prevailing spot price for the commodity being traded. This makes logical sense, because on the day of expiration, the price of a futures contract has to equal the spot price in order for the market to function properly. A normal futures curve is logical for a commodity that is non-perishable and isn't undergoing a period of scarcity. The price of a future for this type of commodity will reflect three economic factors. First, today's spot rate for the commodity. Second, the risk-free rate of return. And third, the cost to store the commodity from the inception of the contract to its maturity date. This structure makes intuitive sense. If it costs more for me to purchase a futures contract than it would for me to buy the commodity today and store it myself at my own expense, I would choose to purchase the commodity today rather than use the futures market. The two have to be in equilibrium to prevent arbitrage opportunities. Changes in demand or scarcity affect the spot price for a commodity. The spot price will fluctuate over the life of a futures contract, and the price of a future will always converge to the spot price as the contract nears maturity. Let's look at the two ways the futures price will move toward the spot price, contango and backwardation. When the price of a future decreases toward the spot price, the future is said to move in contango. However, when the price of the future rises toward the spot price, the future is said to move in backwardation. Now, in reality, the spot price for a commodity will constantly be in flux. Supply, demand, and scarcity will all come into play and shift the spot price from day to day. This is how most speculators and investors make money in commodities. However, for our purposes, we're going to use simplified examples to show how backwardation and contango affect the yield on commodity funds as they roll their contracts. Let's look at an example of contango price movement. In this example, the index fund purchases a six-month future for $11.75 on January 1st. This represents a basis of $1.75 over the spot price of $10. This reflects the cost of storage and the risk-free rate of return. Now, over time, the spot price and the price of the future will fluctuate as demand changes. However, as June approaches, the price of the future will move toward the spot price. In this example, the June spot price is $10.50. Therefore, the price of the future will decrease from $11.75 toward the new spot price of $10.50. Now, shortly before the contract expires, the index fund will close his position. He'll offset his future and receive $10.50. Now, in order to roll the future, the index fund will have to purchase another six-month future, in this case for $12.25.
Now, in total, the index fund lost $1.25 on the original contract, $11.75 minus $10.50. This cycle of losses will repeat on the next contract roll in December. Essentially, when future prices move in Contango, the index fund will have a negative roll yield because it has to purchase futures at prices higher than the prevailing spot price. The price of these futures decreases to the spot price as the future near, nears maturity. Essentially, the index is forced to buy high and sell low. Contango situations will occur when a futures curve is normal. This is clear to see because on a normal futures curve, futures prices are always higher than today's spot price. Let's look at another example of backwardation. Backwardation typically occurs on inverted futures curves. In this example, the index fund purchases a six-month future for $90 in January. The negative basis shows the convenience yield of having the commodity now outweighs the risk-free rate in storage costs. Now, just like in the Contango situation, as time passes, the spot price and the price of the future will fluctuate as supply and demand change. However, as June approaches, the price of the future will move toward the spot price. The new June spot price is $95, so shortly before expiration, the customer closes his position and offsets his future, receiving $95. To roll the future, the index fund will purchase another six-month future for $85. The index fund gained $5 on the original contract, the $95 received minus the $90 in January. This cycle of gains will repeat itself on the next contract as it rolls in December. When future prices move in backwardation, the index fund will have a positive roll yield because it purchases futures at prices lower than the current spot price. The price of these futures then increases to the spot price as the future nears maturity. Essentially, the future is able to buy low and sell high. Backwardation is not common in money commodities like gold or silver. It's more common in oil or commodities that are highly seasonal. In times of strong backwardation, index funds can gain a lot of value. Inversely, in contango markets, index funds will typically lose value. This means that managed funds, which can allocate resources more adeptly depending on changing market conditions, can be more effective than truly passive index funds. However, actively managed funds are more speculative and less diversified for the needs of many institutional investors. Now that we understand how commodity index funds work, we can try to quantify the amount of money that has flowed into commodities markets in the past few years. We've seen trading volumes increase on all of the major exchanges, including the NYMEX, Chicago Board of Trade, ICE, LME, and the over-the-counter market. Government and corporate pension plans, university endowments, sovereign wealth funds, and even private individuals are all investing in commodities. So, let's try to figure out exactly how much money has flowed into the commodity sector.